Hi, welcome back. In this lecture, I am dealing with the respiratory system in insects. Insects are aerobic animals. They require oxygen for metabolic activities. But I want to ask you a question. Is there any animal on this planet which lack respiratory system but still survive? I will proceed with the discussion on the respiratory system in insects. Respiratory system in insects differs from human beings. No, they lack hemoglobin, and like in human, you know, in human beings, the hemoglobin supply you no know, oxygen to different parts of the body. But insects, the gases exchange system is different. So it occurs through a series of air-filled tubes called tracheae and tracheoles. But they successfully and sufficiently supply oxygen to all the cells of the body, and at the same time they remove the carbon dioxide. And this respiratory system is also called ventilatory system or tracheal system. Let us see what are the organs involved in respiration. The organs involved are spiracles, tracheae and tracheoles. What are these spiracles? Spiracles are the perforations or small holes found in the lateral side of the body. Okay. So whatever the visible pores are there on the lateral side, they are spiracles. From there, so much smaller you know, branches arises. The finer tubes arises, which are called tracheae. These tracheae actually gives rise to much, much smaller, finer branches, which are called tracheae, which you now penetrates into the tissues or organs or the cells, and there the gaseous exchange takes place. So these are the three organs which are very important, which supply sufficient oxygen to the all the cells of the body, all the organs of the body, and also it you know, eliminates carbon dioxide out of the body. So let us look at the you know, one by one. Spiracles. No, they are opening through which the air enters inside the trachea. So they are the small, small openings. So they are in fact paired structures. So in a segment, they'll be there in the both the side. And in a, in a generalized insect, the maximum number of spiracles are found are 10 pairs. Okay, that means if a spiracle is there, so it's there on both the sides. Now per segment, usually you'll have the one pair of spiracles. But in one group of insects called Diplurans, a family called Japigidae, you'll find four pairs in thorax. So that means in a single segment, there will be two pairs. That's how it becomes you now four pairs in thoracic region. And usually they are not directly exposed. Okay. And they, are, they have got very well developed opening and closing mechanism, or they are usually covered by the wings so that there will not be the direct exposure so that water loss is avoided. So thereby they conserve the water. So let us see the structure of spiracles. So whatever the visible opening is there, say this is the integument. So this is the opening, okay, body wall. The visible opening leads to a cavity called atrial chamber or atrium. From there, the trachea arises, okay. So this visible opening, in fact, has got a sclerotized plate, which is called peritrium. And this peritrium, in fact, has got this opening and closing mechanism because it is connected to muscle, okay. And this atrial chamber, so gives rise to trachea. And these trachea are lined with small, you no know, finer ears, which filter out the dust. So very simple structure. Visible opening leads to atrium, and from there the trachea arises. Okay. So and that you no know, visible opening is connected to sclerotized plate, which has got you no know, opening and closing mechanism, and that place is called peritrium. So from there, you no know, the spiracles the trachea and tracheoles arises. So trachea are you know, comparatively bigger tubes, whereas tracheoles are finer branches. Both these trachea and tracheoles are ectodermal in origin. Okay, so that means whatever the integument which is there outside is also invaginated through this lining of trachea and tracheoles. Okay, so this is ectodermal in origin and whatever the lining which, which now covers the trachea and tracheole is called cuticular intima. The same terminology we used in case of foregut as well as end gut. So this cuticular intima, in fact, arranged spirally inside. So in order to understand it better, say for example, I'll cut this part of the trachea and extend it, we expand it. So this trachea, in fact, consists of the cuticular intima. So this cuticular intima, intima in fact, arranged spirally like this. Okay, so this spirally arranged cuticular intima is called tenidia, okay, or tenidium is the singular word. So, like exoskeleton which is shed as exuvia at each mouth, 
this cuticular intima or the tenidia also shed as exuvia so a teeth mold it actually sheds so what is the main function of this tenidia then so in fact it gives the protection against the collapse so it will be the tubes will be held perfectly without collapse collapsing so so that here actually or the oxygen or the carbon dioxide is easily will be removed out of the body so that's how they in fact perform the very important function of protecting against the collapse so in fact at each molting whatever the cuticular intima is there will be shed as exuvia so that is the the structure of trachea and tracheoles whereas in some places this cuticular intima will not be there okay so wherever this cuticular intima is not there that part is called hair sac so there this you no know, tracheal part is expanded like balloon so that part is called hair sac where tenidia is absent so what is the function of this hair sac then so hair sacs are collapsible balloon like structures and they act as reservoir of air in terrestrial insects okay so they supply oxygen to different organs and also they provide buoyancy to flying and aquatic insects okay they reduce the weight of the insect so that they perfectly fly they also for for very important function of providing space for growing organs a teeth mold as the organs grows in fact they pushes the hair sac and they grow okay so provide space for growing organ as well so this is the structure and function of hair sac so from these you no know, spiracles the trachea ar arises in larger numbers in fact bundles of trachea arises from the spiracles so this is the internal you no know, structure of you no know, body of the insect so trachea are found so outside you will find the spiracle the visible opening so number of trachea arises and there further they extend as tracheoles much smaller tubes okay they are tracheoles and these tracheoles are modified cells in fact specialized cells where in fact they in fact penetrate into cells tissues muscles and supplies here so then what is the difference between trachea and tracheoles okay so the difference is trachea are comparatively much bigger tubes than the tracheoles so tracheoles measures less than 1 micrometer diameter or so that is the one difference second difference is that whatever the cuticular intima which is there inside the tenidia will not shed as exuvia during molting okay whereas the cuticular intima which is there inside the trachea will shed as exuvia or shed skin during the molting process those are the two difference okay so at the tracheole and wherever they are penetrated at that interface at that connection it acts as a you no know, place for gases exchange removal of you no know, carbon dioxide and the entry of oxygen takes place in that interface okay so let us look at the mechanism of respiration or the process how the oxygen enters or the co2 is you know eliminated the mechanism of respiration in fact you no know, takes place at two phases one is called passive suction ventilation and the second one is called diffusion say for example this is the integument and these are the spiracles spiracles so oxygen enters and co2 will be eliminated that is the main function of respiratory system so we'll look at the each of those phases the first phase is passive suction ventilation so the suction of air or the oxygen depends on the volume of tracheal system okay so if there is less air the spiracular opening take, takes place and the oxygen enters inside okay so it is very simple in order to understand this process of passive suction ventilation say for example you are inside a home where all the doors and windows are closed when you open up a window the air flushes in okay air is sucked in that's why it is called passive suction ventilation without any you no know, involvement of energy the oxygen enters inside inside the body of the insects so that's why it's also called ventilatory system okay oxygen enters inside it moves through the trachea trachea and reaches to the tracheoles okay so passive suction vent ventilation is nothing but the entry of air into the tracheal system that's it okay so because of opening the air enters inside the second phase is diffusion which actually takes place at the tracheal tissue interface so in the first passive suction ventilation the air enters and then it reaches near to the tracheoles so at the tracheal tissue or the cell interface this diffusion takes place so see what happens so we know that oxygen concentration is i here because it has freshly entered inside whereas the carbon dioxide concentration is i inside the hemocell or the blood because the metabolic activity takes place there and the co2 get accumulated so there the co2 will be moved into the tracheoles 
whereas the oxygen will be moved inside the body inside the emosi so the co2 diffuses into the tracheoles into the tracheoles whereas the oxygen diffuses into the tissues or cells okay because of the variation in the concentration gradient so diffusion takes place the gaseous exchange takes place so co2 comes to the tracheole and the o2 gets, gets into the tissues and where it is involved in oxidation process so that's how the co2 you now enters inside the tracheoles from the tissues or organs or muscles and it moves it moves it moves it moves and reaches to the atrial chamber okay so but it is closed if the entry of the spiracle is closed okay it will not be open all the time so once the sufficient quantity of carbon dioxide is accumulated in the atrial chamber okay this spiracle opens up okay once the spiracle op opens up the co2 goes out and o2 is sucked in through the process of passive suction ventilation so that means both these process phases no act depending on the requirement of the insect no oxygen concentration inside the body as well as co2 concentration so the spiracles will not be open all the time it, they open discontinuously and this type of exchange is also called discontinuous gas exchange okay so depending on the concentration gradient concentration of the co2 the spiracles opens up co2 will be moved out and immediately oxygen comes in so that's how the process of gaseous exchange takes place through these two phases in the insects so let us look at the types of respiratory system what is this types actually so the spiracles in fact we are studying that they are actually found in the lateral side of the body and they are found in the different segments okay so based on the location in the different segments and their functioning the respiratory system is classified into nine subtypes under four categories four categories the first category is polyneustic poly means more naturally so at least in this case eight pairs of functional spiracles should be present so we know that in a generalized insect like cockroach or grasshoppers 10 pairs will be present okay so that is called volonistic so volonistic consists of 10 pairs perineustic means 9 pairs eminustic means 8 pairs eponeustic means 7 pairs so the location may be different in thoracic region different segments of thorax and abdomen we will study those things so volo means 10 peri means 9 emi means 8 ipo means 7 pairs in any particular insect species so that's called polyneustic okay we'll look at the one by one volo neustic as i was telling 10 pairs one in meso one in meta and eight in abdomen so meso thorax and meta thorax consists of one pair of spiracles each and eight pairs in abdomen so found in case of generalized insects like grasshoppers and cockroach okay so volo neustic peri means nine pairs are functional one in prothorax or meso sometime and eight in abdomen found in case of caterpillar or maggot of gallmid so maggots or the gallmid just belongs to family called cecidomyid so peri means nine pairs are functional 10 9 whereas emi means eight pairs are functional one in mesothorax and seven in abdomen found in fungal feeding dipteran maggot of mycetophilidae so maggots mycetophilidae maggot you find this emi neustic eight pairs ipo neustic seven pairs found in case of head louse wherein one in mesothorax and six in abdomen okay so i'll go back volo 10 peri 9 emi 8 ipo 7 so let us look at the second category oligoneustic here oligo means few only one or two functional spiracles are present so one is ampineustic metaneustic proneustic so ampi means two pairs okay one in prothorax and one in last abdominal segment so found in case of maggots of diptera okay dipteran young ones are called maggots okay so ampineustic meta meta neustic meta means last found in the last abdominal segment in case of mosquito larvae we have studied about respiratory siphon okay this is the one meta neustic found in last abdominal segment pro neustic again only one pair is functional but is present in the prothoracic region prothoracic region which is found in case of pupae of diptera pupae of dipterans are called quiet type okay so this is the second category the third category is a neustic a neustic means absence of spiracles if there are no spiracles how do they respire so they respire through the cuticle the exoskeleton itself no allows the gaseous exchange to take place which is also called cutaneous respiration also called a neustic type of respiration so which occurs in protura columbola they are the primitive eterygotan insects they are wingless insects and also found in the parasitic diptera and para endoparasitic hymenoptera so these are the the grubs or the maggots which are found inside the other insect body for example other other organisms body 
say for example he insert is laying the x and the acid maggot or the grub which is there inside having spherical is a disadvantage right because if there is a pore the water enters or the blood enters blood of this insect enters okay as a result of that they lack the spiracles but thus they utilize the oxygen present in the blood of other insects through the cuticle so that is called cutaneous respiration okay occurs in parasitic insects as well hypo hyperneustic hypo means 10 you know so in a not generalized insect there will be 10 pair of spiracles more than 10 means hyperneustic okay presence of more than normal number of functional spiracles occurs in case of japididae so this is exceptions so occurs in more number more than the normal number so four pairs on thorax and seven abdominal so that's how it is more than 10 hyperneustic so these are the four categories and nine types so this is how the respiration in fact takes place in terrestrial insects okay having spiracles trachea and tracheoles let us look at the respiration in aquatic insects how do these no, aquatic insects respire so for convenience i am dividing the respiration in aquatic insects into two types aquatic insects obtaining oxygen from air aquatic insects obtaining oxygen from water what is this actually so these insects live in aquatic ecosystem but they take oxygen from air that means they frequently come to the surface and takes the oxygen present in this, this uh, the surface whereas in case of these insects they do live in you no know, aquatic ecosystem but they need not to come to the surface in order to take the water you no know, the oxygen that means they utilize the dissolved oxygen within the water present within the water so we'll take the few examples under each of those and the different modifications thereby the insects which are living in the aquatic ecosystem they come to the surface or with the some modifications they takes the oxygen present in the air or some of the modifications through which the insects living in the water will take the dissolved oxygen so we'll take the first one aquatic insects obtaining oxygen from the air the first modification which is found in number of insects is the respiratory siphon so respiratory siphon is also called caudal breathing tube cauda means last abdominal segment okay like in case of aristalis species which is belongs to family called cirpidae so most of the cirpids are flower flies in fact they are pollinators okay and in fact the maggots of this you no know, cirpids acts as predators of various insects whereas one of this you no know, cirpid is adapted to polluted water so in kannada it is called balula you might have heard of so which lives in polluted water so this has got this long extension okay which rises which brings this you no know, tail like structure to the top surface can extend to a length of 6 cm and takes the oxygen okay this is called caudal breathing tube also called respiratory siphon okay also found in case of napidae they are commonly called water scorpion belongs to order hemiptera or also it occurs in mosquito larvae okay so respiratory siphon which come to the surface so just bring the, the exposes that respiratory siphon to the external you no know, the surface water surface and they takes the oxygen okay this is the one modification when the aquatic insects takes the action from the air the second one is second modification which is found in a predatory diving beetle belongs to family called dytisidae which is called air store or physical gill which is also called bubble in fact so this is the predatory diving beetle so what happens say for example in a air okay in a terrestrial ecosystem the concentration of oxygen is 21% nitrogen is 78% carbon dioxide is 0.03% okay so when this insect in fact dives when the insect dives into the water body it's called predatory diving beetle in fact it's a predaceous beetle okay it you no know, it forms a physical gill around the spiracles it of course it has got a spiracle but is usually when it dives it forms a bubble around the spiracle so when it is freshly dives in this bubble contains as like you no know, external system terrestrial ecosystem oxygen contains 21% and nitrogen 78% okay but the gaseous exchange takes place it starts utilizing the oxygen once it starts utilizing the oxygen the oxygen concentration reduces to 20% okay nitrogen concentration increases it goes on okay it increases it may further reduces as it utilizes okay so it you know whatever the co2 which is you know comes out out of the spiracles will be released to the water body and it takes the oxygen okay so so as a result the oxygen concentration reduces but what happens okay after some time 
the whatever the dissolved oxygen is there which moves into the valve okay so nitrogen concentration reduces further so thereby the gases exchange takes place within this air store or physical bubble it is not a permanent structure in fact when the insect dies this type of small physical gill is formed a air bubble is formed which is through which in fact they exchange the gases gas so because of that no equilibrium is restored and they continuously no getting the oxygen and once this no air bubble is lost they comes to the earth surface again they dive and this process actually continues so occurs in case of predatory diving beetle so what about what is the importance of this nitrogen then so without nitrogen in fact the bubble is does not act as a gill in fact okay so although non respiratory gas which is very important to keep this bubble alive for some time so that the gases exchange takes place so let us look at the some modification which occurs in case of aquatic insects obtaining oxygen from water so previously we discussed from air now from water the first modification is tracheal gill of course we have discussed already about the dragonfly naiads damselfly naiads and mayfly naiads so naiads of dragonflies have got rectal gills gills inside the rectum itself that's why they are called rectal gills or caudal gills in case of damselflies their extensions in the caudal region and similarly in case of mayflies they this type of filamentous gills are found in the first 1 to 7 abdominal segments so the through these gills okay the gaseous exchange takes place so they need not to come to the surface in order to take the oxygen so tracheal gills in various insects so especially in naiads so second example i am giving is plastron respiration so what is this plastron respiration so in fact this is a permanent one okay whereas in case of physical gill or air store i was talking in case of predatory diving beetle is a temporary one which occurs you know when the insect dies whereas in case of plastron respiration which occurs in you know aquatic beetles like hydrophilidae wherein a thin film of you no know, air is held by a group of fine hairs over the body okay very small minute hairs will be there which holds the oxygen or the air okay around the body these hairs are specialized structure in fact and holds the thin film of air permanently okay and this film of gas is called plastron which carries sufficient oxygen which is used by the insect for respiration okay permanently so gases exchange takes place and is called plastron respiration very thin film film of air surrounding the spiracles and through that no gases exchange takes place occurs in case of hydrophilidae so this is the another example okay let us look at the no another system say few of the insects in fact live in intertidal region or the near the edges of the streams so they may no have to takes the action from the terrestrial ecosystem or sometimes they may frequently get into the water they may frequently fall into the water bodies so how do they survive if they live no fall into the water body they will actually dies but they have got some structural modifications which are called spiracular gills so spiracular gills are the extensions of the cuticle okay like this surrounding a spiracle and bearing a plastron again small minute hairs which actually connected to the spiracles and thereby they actually respire so in water the plastron provides a large gas water interface for diffusion but in the air when they are in the terrestrial ecosystem the interstices small small openings of the gill provide a direct route to the entry of oxygen okay so thereby with this modification they can survive in both terrestrial ecosystem or whenever they get into the water with the help of these gills the respiration takes place okay found in case of various dipteran insects especially in case of pupae of black fly belongs to family simulidae okay so at last what are the things which we discussed in this class spiracles tracheae and tracheoles are involved in oxygen transport and co2 elimination so this respiratory system is ectodermal in origin which will be frequently shed during molting so respiration occurs through two distinct phases which is called passive suction ventilation the second step is called diffusion and based on the position or the the functioning of the spiracles various respiratory types have been identified in case of insects aquatic insects may you now frequently come to the surface in order to take the action or may they use the dissolved action in the water itself thereby the respiration takes place okay so few questions a new stick type of respiration is found in 
which group of insects spiracular gills are found in okay physical gills are found in which group of insects few fill in the blanks mosquito regrets regulars respire by cockroach have dash type of respiratory system okay probably you may get to you know answers for all these questions in the content provided but i have no want to end with few questions what about eggs no we tried i think about neem snails and adults and all those things how do the insects eggs respire okay eggs are deposited in different ecosystem how do they respire just look for the answers what is hemocyanin okay frequently associated with hemoglobin so people use both hemoglobin and hemocyanin sometime what is this hemocyanin and another very important question is there an animal without respiratory system okay try to google out and find out the answer and thank you if there are any specific questions okay please post below or you can email me thank you thank you very much